In this video, I'll demonstrate the functionality of circuit breaker module. The idea is to first test the solution on a single node mule runtime. Later on, we'll test it on two independent runtimes which are running on different nodes. So let's get started. To begin with, you need to follow this link and the link is placed in the description below. So this is the GitHub link wherein I have hosted the repository and it has a readme file which has all the details. So let's understand the different states of the circuit breaker. So the circuit breaker has three main states which is closed, error and open state. So closed state is when is the default state uh, and when there are no errors uh, the state is closed. And when the state is closed, all the message will flow through the main route. So this is the main route. So this main route works in case of closed state and error state, which I'll tell you now. So the error state is a state which occurs when there are errors and it is well within the threshold. So in that case, it's an error state. So whenever the first error occurs, which is based on the expression that we'll give, uh, it remains in uh, it moves to the error state from the closed state now when the threshold reaches in that case the state will change from error to the open state because if it exceeds the limit of threshold for example we have a threshold percentage of 100 uh, in a window period of 5 minutes so if all the transactions fail within the window period of 5 minutes then the state will change from error to open in case if it doesn't happen if it doesn't reach the threshold what we have defined within a given period of time it will then move back to the closed state so this is the state transition of the circuit breaker now when the circuit breaker opens up all the messages will then be routed to the fallback route so main route works in case of closed and error state once the circuit is open, it goes, uh, the messages flow through the fallback route. And open state also has its own uh, threshold limit. For example, if a circuit breaker opens up, you have an option to configure the open duration. So depending on whatever the value is configured, after that period of time, the circuit will move back to the closed state. And again, if there is an error occurring in the closed state again, it moves back to the error state and then followed by the op open state. So that's the idea about uh, the circuit breaker states. Now we'll see how to download and install. So to install it, you just need to download this code. So click on code and download the zip file. So once it's downloaded, you just need to extract the file. So I have the file downloaded. Now I'll just extract it. Let me quickly extract the file. So once extracted, you just need to go to the location where the POM file is placed, open a command prompt and just run MVN clean install. And let me skip the tests. I don't have any tests in this, but let's just use that. So it will install uh, this particular module in my local Maven repository, and then I can simply add the dependency. So now the build is successful. Once the build is successful, we can just add the dependency. So the dependency is placed in here. Uh, if I scroll up, here's the dependency. You just need to copy this and paste it in AnyPoint Studio. So I already have a project set up. And if I go to the POM XML, I just need to copy the dependency details from there and then just paste it uh, in here. So the dependency is pasted over here. So once done, you should be able to see the circuit breaker module. So if we go back to the uh, XML, then I see a uh, circuit breaker module over here. So the circuit breaker module only has uh, one operation, which is uh, this particular route. So when you drag and drop it, 
you can see main root and fallback root which I have already configured so let me just remove this and just explain what is present so this particular uh, root has two roots main root and fallback root right so first we need to configure the circuit breaker so it has the general configuration one is the circuit breaker ID now remember the circuit breaker ID should be usually uh, unique so that the state changes for the circuit breaker should reflect on that particular application itself because it is a map uh, a sort of hash map which stores in key value pairs right so if you name multiple application with the uh, same name and uh, all of them are in a single runtime with a single domain in that case there could be issues so this value should be kept unique which can be easily done by having app dot name as the circuit breaker id then uh, threshold percentage so this values are default you can just edit it as per your requirement so threshold percentage is uh, the percentage that you want for which the error should uh, uh, the circuit breaker should trip so now it's set to 100 which means that if there are uh, in duration of five minutes if there are 10 requests and all of them fail only in that case the circuit will trip so the threshold period now the threshold period identifies what is the period that you want to monitor the error so here it's specified as one minute which means that for the circuit breaker to trip it should start monitoring for one minute from the time when the first error occurs so if the first error occurred at 12 27 it will monitor until 12 28 and the threshold percentage should be 100 which means that between 12 27 to 12 28 there should be uh, if there are 10 requests all of them fail then the circuit breaker will kick into action so this starts uh, the threshold period counting starts from the point where the first error which error the error that is configured over here if that occurs if this statement satis is get satisfied uh, it, it evaluates to true then in that case the threshold period counting will start from there open duration specifies the duration for which the circuit will remain open which means that the messages will be routed through this fallback route so that's the open duration now error expression is any data view expression you want to get evaluated for counting as error so by default it's set to error equals to not null which means that if there are any errors in the main route coming up it will just uh, uh, treat that as an error and then change the state to error and then it will start the threshold period counting and if uh, at, if at the end of the threshold period if the threshold percentage is met it will go and trip the circuit so that's the configuration for the circuit breaker route now we again want to configure the hazel cast instance for that we need to go to the global element and then search for circuit breaker config so if you click on create and search for circuit breaker config you get it and you need to add it so i've already configured it now let's just see that so member ip address uh, this is uh, here you can have multiple ip address but remember they should be comma separated so for example your application runs on two different nodes okay so in that case you want both of the node to create a group so that the state changes can be shared between both of them so same application hosted on two different nodes so you have to give the member ip address of the other nodes so if, if it runs on three different nodes so you have to give the ip address of the remaining two nodes because this will run on one node and the remaining two nodes have to be here so this should be comma separated value for example if i have something like this just copy this and paste it so this is one node and this is the other node so excluding the current node we have to give this id so 103 and 104 but now the idea is to just use it on a single node so we won't configure this and this is not a mandatory value now host ip address is the ip on which 
your application is running so the current machine so this is the ip address of the machine that is using it so if you do not configure it by default it will have the loop back address 127.0.0.1 and in case if you configure it it will have it will have the value that you provided cluster port is the port that will be used by hazelcast so by default it's 5701 you can configure to the value of your choice depending on which ports are open or available on the machine that your application is running so that's about the configuration now what we can do is we'll try to run this application so to give you an idea of what's happening in this application is that i have a http request here. so basically we add a circuit breaker when we think that the other system that we are going to call is going to experience some downtime or there could be some error right and we want the other system some time to recover right so until it recovers uh, we should be waiting for it rather than bombarding the end system with the request right so that is why we have added a requester over here so this requester is basically calling an api which gives 404 just to simulate some error so in this case it will give 404 which will result into an error and then the circuit will trip okay so this requester is placed in the main route and then i have a fallback route so the fallback route is basically in case if things go wrong with the other system what do i want to give, do so in that case mostly we would like to provide a degraded service rather than providing no service right so what you are doing is basically sending a dummy response or you can send a cached response depending on how you implement your application this is just uh, an idea so here i am just sending a dummy response you can also uh, cache the previous response uh, and send the previous response as well in the from the fallback route so that's the idea of uh, fallback route so not necessarily you need to uh, add requester or only you can add any other connector but it's just uh, an idea that you you have to add a connector which does some call to the external system and that system is prone to faults and you want it to give some time to recover back okay so having said that now let's uh, try to run this application and i've also set up an on error continue so in case if any error occurs in the main route uh, we should get this error message with the error description so let's run this application just save it so the application has been deployed now and if we check the logs uh, we can see that uh, members have been added so this is the ip address of the current machine that we are working on and it is forming a single member cluster okay and uh, now uh, let's just try to hit this api so i have this endpoint and let me just quickly hit it and i'm getting uh, the error message uh, it's 404 uh, the error that we are getting so if we go back and check the logs we see that uh, it started the state as closed and then later on uh, it when it detected the error uh, it it went to change on the state to error updated the error count the request count and then change the state as error so and then it has scheduled the task for error check which will get executed once the threshold period ends so meanwhile we'll just keep getting uh, the error message yeah so we are getting and the counter will keep on updating so this is now in error state we didn't get this logs as opposed to the previous case because uh, the state was in error so it went uh, in the error state code and now it has updated the counter of error to 2 and request to 2 as well now after some time it should change the state yeah so if we see uh, when the task got run uh, after one minute so it started at 1306 right and it uh, the task ran exactly after one minute so the error count was two and the request count was two so ratio becomes one because two by two is one and it exceeded the threshold limit so it changed the state to open so if i hit the request i'm getting 
the response from the fallback root which was defined in the transform that we had in the fallback group so basically we are returning a dummy response or a cached response uh, as far as long as the circuit remains in open state so after one minute uh, passes by it will move back to the closed state so let's just see that so after almost after one minute what we are able to see is that uh, trip duration complete restoring the circuit and the circuit state is now moving back to closed so it has also destroyed the pn counters so if i move back uh, to postman and hit it again i can see the error message coming again because we have configured a wrong url right so in that case uh, we should be able to see the error messages coming again and then again it will start the counter so if we see uh, the counter uh, it all started from one and then started uh, move to two and it will again move back to the open state so that's about a single runtime which was on one node now what we'll try to do is uh, extend this use case uh, onto another machine which has the same application i'll deploy uh, the same application uh, with exactly the same configuration it's just that it will be another machine with another runtime so what we are going to observe is we'll observe two uh, different uh, i mean two members uh, in the hazelcast instance so let's try that out so for this solution to work on uh, two different nodes i have made some changes to the configuration so if we go to the configuration uh, you, you if you can observe that uh, i've added a member ip address so this is the ip address of a uh, the other machine which is hosting another mule application and this is the host ip address which is having uh, the current uh, application deployed so this is the current machine and remember a point that the cluster port should be same on both the machines so in case if it is not same they won't join the cluster but create their own cluster so it's quite important that you add a cluster port which is same on both the machine and in case if you want to add multiple members you can just add by separating them with a comma so once you have this configuration you also need to set up the same on the other machine so i have set up a same exact same application on the other machine as well the only change on the other machine is that these two values are interchanged because this is the host ip of the other machine so this will come in host ip address and this will go to the member ip address on the other machine so let's just try to run this application so the application has now been deployed now let's check the log once so if we see in the logs uh, we can observe there's only one member which is uh, with the ip 102 and the port number is 5701 but if i scroll down after a few moments i have started the application on other node as well so uh, the second one has also joined in so this is 104 so the current node is represented by the keyword this and the this is the other node which is which has joined the cluster so size is 2 and the version is also 2 uh, previously the version was 1 so this means that uh, both the members have joined the cluster and they are able to share the state of the circuit all right so now what i'll do is i'll just trigger uh, uh, the application on the other node so i'll just send a request and i'm getting the error message so there are no logs in this machine because uh, uh, right uh, it, it triggered on the other machine right but it's just that it initialized the partition table so if i hit on this current machine so i'm getting the error and if i observe the error count has been updated to two because uh, it was one on the other machine so now it's two on this machine so the error count has been updated now let me trigger the other one again it's so we didn't observe don't observe any log and if I go back to this current machine, the error count moves to 4. So if we wait for a minute or so, uh, the circuit breaker should trip on one of the node and the same state will get reflected on all of them. So let's just wait for some time while it trips the circuit. So if we observe, uh, the circuit has tripped now. It has changed the state to open. Error count was 4, request count was 4, and ratio is 1. 
So what I'll do since it tripped on this machine, let's just test on the other machine. So this is the other machine. So I'm getting the cached response, which was in the fallback route. Let's go to the current machine and we are getting the same response, which means that the open state has been reflected on both the nodes and uh, the scheduler ran on this machine so it didn't it runs only on one machine but changes the state of both the machines so it usually occurs on the master node so master node runs the schedule uh, which is there in place and after some time we should observe that the state would move back to the closed state so now the circuit has moved back to the closed state we see that uh, it's restored and the pn counters are destroyed now let's quickly go to the other node and see if it's reflected or not because it changed the state on this node. So let's try another node. So yes, we are able to see uh, the detail on the other node that it's uh, it has moved back to closed state because we are getting the error message. And on the same node, we are also getting the uh, same. So both of the uh, run times are now in sync and they have the same state with them. So this is how you can implement the circuit breaker in your application and make your APIs uh, more resilient and uh, allow them to self heal when there occurs error rather than bombarding them with request and just bringing the whole system down. So I hope uh, you might have found the video useful. Thanks for watching.